In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, here we are at Advent 4. We're on the home stretch, and we're about to be on the move, having rested in anticipation and hope, longing for peace. We are making our final preparations to move into the light. And so our hope begins to come to life, literally, with and in Blessed Mary. We do have to wonder about her, young, probably not so worldly, and she seems to respond to God's call so willingly. Did she know what lay ahead? Could she ever have imagined it? Everything in this story about Jesus' birth is a challenge. His social location is less than optimal. His young, unmarried mother finds herself with a questionable story to tell. Who's going to believe this one? Jesus' family is dislocated, and they are soon to become refugees. Homelessness, shame, embarrassment. But yet, there is a sense of delight in Mary when she meets her cousin Elizabeth, also surprisingly pregnant, old and barren. Even in the most difficult of circumstances, we take delight in a baby. Often we find hope there, hope that for this child, perhaps our child, life will be better. And that is God's hope for us too. Us, we, his children. Life will be better, greater peace, more joyousness of heart, and deeper love for him and this world in which we live. Sadly, we are not there yet. We're moving in that direction. But parts of the world are broken. They are torn apart by greed, selfishness, and fear. But at the same time, there is the light, and there are signs of hope. God's creation is a work in progress. This week, we heard news of world leaders, including our own president, working hand-in-hand -hand with Pope Francis. That was great. I really love that news this week. And God continues to call us in new ways. I think this is the first time our president, any president, ever worked with any pope. Certainly new. And we, too, the people of St. Paul, are called to break down barriers, those things that are getting in our way, and in the way of God's people. Now, I'm not sure any of us have the power to affect change in quite the same way that the president or the pope do. But we do have control over one part of the mix, and that is our own heart. Sadly, we have barriers in our hearts. Some we're quite well aware of, and others have been there so long, we're not aware of their existence. Some barriers we may construct in order to tame the chaos of the world. We block out pieces and people here and there in an effort to make life manageable. But looking to tame the chaos can never, never faithfully withhold love. And that's what some of our barriers do. We can never faithfully look at another one of God's children and see them as less than. And I see it, and I hear it, happening in the world, happening in our community, and happening right here. As we move through the final days of Advent, this season of preparation, we will make sure that everything is in place for Christmas. People here have been working very diligently and faithfully. And I see the beauty of their work around. 
priority. But make sure that along with your hearth and home, your heart is also prepared. If you do not have room in your heart for all, I fear that there will be no room for Jesus, who is himself the love of God. As God calls to us, as he surely is, let us respond with the words of Mary. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Amen.